Welcome back, MTG Joe here, and today we're going to be playing some Rank Ladder, trying to find a deck that I want to play for next week's MCQ, I believe it's next week's uh, challenge. I finished top 1200 last month, so I'll be participating in that. Um, format is standard, so we'll be testing out some decks. Um, up first today uh, is uh, Andre Starsky's uh, Green White Yorian, not an 80 card, 60 card. Uh, blink kind of sub food theme value engine. Um, this he went nine and zero in the CFB Pro tournament with this. Um, I and mean, effectively, what we're trying to do is establish some sort of Yorian loop and get a bunch of value. There is the food sub theme of Gilded Goose, Trail of Crumbs, and Wicked Wolf uh, for card advantage and fights effects, as well as kind of making this indestructible. You can get Elspeth Conquered Death loops going. But for those of you who are unfamiliar how the loop is established, uh, with Yorian in play uh, and Charming Prince, Charming Prince will blink Yorian, Yorian will come back, blink Charming Prince, and then each turn cycle repeats this between you and your opponent's turn. You can bounce all your permanents and, and basically get all that enter the battlefield value over and over again. And the way we kind of piece that together is we have like removal and glass casket and Skyclave Apparition we can reuse. Uh, there's card draw and line of War visionary um, paired with like the great henge when creatures come in you get those uh, card draw off those creatures uh, else with conquers death basically can be reset every turn um, and then you have Coppola or Kogla not Coppola uh, to fight as well um, just kind of rounding out the deck you have tangled florahedron as some early ramp or just a land and then you have both Emiria's call and symbiosis as kind of late game um, mana sinks when you kind of set yourself up. Uh, mana base pretty clean. Sideboard wise you have the chain webs for uh, flying decks or the rogue matchups. Uh, you have run afoul again for flyers, gl another glass casket, some moves versus graveyard decks, another omen versus more aggressive decks but also good against control, some shatters. Um, if you're kind of getting outpaced though creatured you have Elspeth uh, Conquers Death, just another copy, Vivian is card advantage, and then a Heliod's Intervention, mainly for the food matchup. Um, so let's fire it up, see how it goes. We are starting at 238 on the ladder. I uh, got a couple decks we ideally get to today, but wanted to start with this one. It looked interesting. Hey John, how's it going? Thanks for stopping by. Playing 99%. So if we lose, we are fallen far in the rank. Sounds fine. We could get the goose engine going. It's perfect. So with goose in trailer crumbs, you can tap your goose to make a mana and then feed that mana. No attacks here. So opponent looks to be either green white. So this could be a mirror. Yeah. Let's see what they target here first. Hey Rosie, how's it going? Wicked Wolf is perfect. So we could have Wicked Wolf fight the Skyclave apparition. Can do this next turn and keep up protection because then they can have their own wolf. I think we just do this. Yeah, this is uh, when I saw this list, it was actually really sweet. I haven't played like a Selesnia deck in some time. It's nice to see white cards actually being useful. Okay, so they're on the we're playing the mirror right now. I think we eat their trail of crumbs here. Glass casket probably gets rid of goose. Okay, so Yorian's also nice for the following turn. So if they have Wicked Wolf. 
they fight. But I think we just get rid of their card draw engine here. There was a play to get rid of Glass Casket. But I think... Okay, so their fight here... You don't have reach. So I can do this. I think we, hmm, this turn's really interesting. I think we Yorian get back our Gilded Goose for the food. This one's going to be tough. I basically want to make enough food that when my Wicked Wolf comes into play, I can fight this. Ah, and they got the Henge. Jeez. Yeah. That was a good draw. Hmm. Okay, Apparition, can't really get rid of much here. If I shock in, I make a food. I can just play this on their attack. So if I do this, ah, that was stupid. Um, let's go wolf here, fight the goose. I thought I had more white. We might be able to race them. They're gaining two a turn. I think I take the seven here. Yikes. It's not probably not the end of the world. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double block on Kogla if they attack. Eat the food here, then Skyclave Apparition the Wolf. Omen's fine, doesn't really do much. Oh, it gains indestructible, oh shit. That does do a lot. I forgot it. You always forget about that second line of text. So... Let's exile you. Play you out as a blocker. Actually, I shouldn't have done that. I could have made a food token. Now I can't. All right, well, we're learning the deck. That is a great draw. This matchup's really going to come down to who gets Henge. The one of Kogla just absolutely ruined us.
Um, Vivian's. This is going to be a grind fest. Heliod seems good. These omens don't seem that great. Glass Casket also doesn't seem that great in this matchup. Uh, mind you, it hits like a lot of the smaller stuff. Probably trim a Yorian. Do I want the Shatter the Skies? How many lions are in the deck? Can I cut the Florhedrons? So we have 18, 23, 24. Trim one of these. I feel like Yorian loops are important, but we'll cut down just to have more variety in the deck. I think we need to be more mindful with our Skyclave apparitions. Sounds really slow. But it's got powerful cards, so maybe we try it on the play. Okay, so they got their trail. Do need another white source. Perfect. So I can value Yorian next turn. So I can Yorian set up for Henge. Or I can do this and then ask, get rid of their trail of crumbs. That seems better. Because next turn I can Kogla. Yeah, if they're spending their whole turn doing that. This matchup's probably going to be whoever gets their Kong going. And then if you're able to establish the loop. Let's do this. If they have ECD, they can use it on Kogla, but that's their whole turn again. Okay, perfect. So I can go Great Henge, play Yorian, blink my whole team. Just I think we just attack like this. I need the mana here. Or I don't need the mana. But I figure they won't block there. Now I Yorian. And then this game, we're just running away with it, like compared to the last game. We fight that. We're really far ahead here. The Henge still requires some setup. It's not like Historic where you can get it on turn three. Um, on the play, we might want the casket trim down a trail. 
I wonder if we bring in a shatter just as a catch up. Or like an ooze. Ooze can be decent at just picking off their graveyard. With because they'll probably have the Conqueror's Death. Alright. Opponents on the play. This hand is probably not good enough. It's slow, but we have double ass apparition. We have three draw. Let's try it out. Yeah, I'm on the draw. We lost game one. The seven spells, two land opener. Perfect. Yeah, I think having like a couple of your engine pieces online seems reasonable. They're probably, if they have Aspirant, we'll shock in, play this out. Interesting. Oh, that's probably Omen of the Sun. Or it could just be, yeah, draw a card. So we could have Skyclaved there, but they would have just responded to that. Okay, so they Goose. So I think now we get rid of Trail. They get rid of our Trail. Yeah. Seems good. Let's get rid of this with this becomes quite obnoxious. So we want to make sure we get rid of that. And then we have Conquer's Death with the Yorian, so we can exile whatever they have, and then ideally get that going. Uh, chat, is the game audio too loud? Okay, cool. I'll take the damage here. I think we... Hmm. Yeah, I think we do this. And then this one gives us a bigger token. So if the last card's Conquer's Death, or if they draw Conquer's Death, yeah, now that feels bad. That feels great. Um, yeah. Fight there. So they apply attacks on us. Yeah, because like we didn't have anything in our graveyard, but like we took a chance because if we could have got it going, it would have felt good. That's fine. They got all the wolves. Henge. So I think we just attack like this. I'm going to get a Yorian in play.
Just get some value. Uh, it was either or. Because like I could have got Yorian and then got that going. But if I could have established the, like, the loop because I had Charming Prince coming off. Let's see what they XL. Just Lionel Okay, so Wolf here is very good. Let's just fight the Skyclave. Mind you, do we wait the turn on the Skyclave? Or just exile it? I think we just exile it. Because like if I fight it this turn, it comes back with um, Elspeth Conquer's death. They have six life they can gain here. Clock is something to be mindful of in these matchups. Like we've used three-ish minutes more than of our opponent. So unless they have Shatter the Sky here. Yeah, I finally got my fourth one. These were the, the stupid card that I just never opened in packs. I had to craft like the last one for this. So unless the opponent brought in the Shatters, just Visionary. They dig in. See what they got. Uh, we're one short if we go henge. If I go wolf, that just kills them. Got him. Stumbled that first game, but glad we got it. What would that bring us up to? 168. See how high we can get today. I'm just going to proactively... The client's been a little, like, jittery. As you can see... So just giving it a reset. I had it crash a couple times. I don't know if you've ever gotten the unexpected draw. It queued us both up and then gave us a draw. So as this loads up, for those of you new to the channel, I'm MTG Joe, play Magic pretty much every day of the week. I'm currently top 200 in Mythic. Um, so we're testing out decks for MCQ. I play primarily Standard and Historic on Arena. Uh, brews play tier one stuff like that if you do enjoy the content uh if you could drop a follow on uh twitch greatly appreciated uh if you do enjoy the content even further everything i play is archived to my youtube channel mt uh, mtg underscore joe or just mtg joe uh everything we play you can find it there um but let's jump into another game There's like three or four decks today that I want to try out, so probably play two to three of each just to get a feel for it. Some of them are going to be a bit longer. Uh, there's a, there's a Yorian decks, there's a team, so there's this, uh, Yorian Blink, the blue-white version. There's Teamer Ramp, um, kind of uh, omnath list Ramp deck. And then there was um, the Green-Black Adventures deck. Play first keep
Should we like fake and not show them the white yet? Make them think we're on uh, mono green food? In essence, this is like a food deck, like the green mono green food deck with Yorian for extra value and Elspeth Conquer's deck, Death to Break the Mirror. Okay, so that's actually pretty good if they're rogues. Ooh, Esper Doom. Bye. Bye. Hardly knew ya. Like, the henge is what you take. You're playing Esper, you're playing a grindy deck. Um... So this is interesting in the sense I could Charming Prince to draw an extra card, hoping they don't play. I think we we just get in the damage. Even if they have Doom here, their board's not really set up for a Doom turn, and then I can reset the Wicked Wolf fight if needed. This also plays around shatter the sky but if they're on extinction event then they can pick off my wolf one two three four five six we're one off from symbiosis that's fine make your tokens This is good because it gives me um, more kind of ammunition to sack to Doom Foretold. That also stops the tokens. We'll draw a card here, and then I can sack a food if I want to draw a card off Trail of Crumbs. I think I may hold this up just as protection until next turn with Gilded Goose. That was a really good draw. So they either take our card advantage or they take a Goose. They have the blessing. Refills their hand. So I think here, let's do this now because we have goose in hand. Thank you. Yeah, it's too slow, I think. So this is a Heliod's intervention. Let's bring these in. Kind of like Chain Web. And probably another Omen of the Sun. Uh, in this matchup, the Wicked Wolf's actually not the greatest. Skyclave. Skyclave's interesting. Maybe we keep two in. You gotta be more proactive. You gotta be like with Croxa for it to be reasonable. Kogla, could, actually Kogla's pretty good because it can blow up their enchantments. Trim a Yorian because our deck's likely not gonna have as many permanents out. Uh, Glass Casket's bad. Let's bring in a couple of Ooze because they're probably on the Dance of a Man's Plan. Conquer's Death is good. Just two chain webs. Unless they bring in more removal. But if they're one for wanting us. Let's 
Let's do it like this. Because the wolf, we really don't have much to fight in the deck. Agonizer's Remorse, if it was like one mana, it's reasonable, but I think where it's at, it's just not efficient enough. This hand's a bit slower, but Goose can accelerate us. Pizzle Dizzle, thanks for the follow. <laughs> it's a fun name to say. I think we just get proactive here. Yikes, they went full board. Skyclave can be played for Doom. Nah. Took a chance bringing this out this turn. The discard doesn't work, but they do have information on what our hand is. Since they kept the nightmares in against us, I'm gonna get rid of the chain webs, I think. Yeah, if they set up Doom here, it's kind of annoying. They're in a pretty good spot to get us in the lock with Doom. So like last game where they never really set up anything, this game they'll have at least one enchantment and we don't have a, a board state to really prevent us from getting stuck under it. We'll play this one out as long as possible because going to time. Okay, so they have Blessing. Take two. Kogla will be gone. Kogla blows up their stuff. Trail's good. Morizonda, thanks for the follow. Appreciate the support. I think we set up the scry here. That's also very good. So we kind of get hit hard here by Extinction Event. Which they have. So I kind of want to draw this. So I'm just going to play out a Yorian here. We have the second one in hand so we can get some value. I also want to apply pressure on them because if they go Doom Foretold here... Okay, so they haven't drawn the Doom, so each of these spells is costing them life. So I'm going to hold this up because even I might just be able to hit Doom Foretold. If not, then I do it on their end step. They've shown that they brought in Discard against us. call yeah that's a card Q 
Goose and Omen. Take eight. Scavenging Ooze doesn't really hit much here. I think we do this. Holds back the blockers a bit. It's not really much I can hit. Like if they have Dance of the Mance, then I feel kind of bad, but I'm really not hitting too much to begin with. They're a land off from Dancing for six, but they just have double call. Come on. Certainly a draw. So I th think we just do this. Pass the turn. I don't want to play out the next goose because if they have extinction event, then it gets rid of my entire board. Yeah. Chainweb would actually be pretty solid here. Not like super worried because we can gain a lot of life. What are they choosing to do? Oh, that's annoying. Prioritize, get the enchantments out of their graveyard. So pass turn here. They hit for 12. I go up to 14. They've drawn three calls. Okay, uh, that's a card. Charizard James, thanks for the follow. I don't think we have an out to this. The triple angel's probably going to do us in. Yorian doesn't really help. This doesn't let me block enough. Triple Angels, uh, just a bit too much. Um, run a foul seems kind of fringe. So maybe we want the wolves, but they have extinction event. They're not as good. Get rid of the uses. They didn't really do much that game. Apparition doesn't hit that. You can play the glass caskets. They're a little fringe again. We just do that and one casket. Like if we could get Vivian down, something like that. All 
are decks better suited against like non-extinction event? So that's fine. Uh, this is our second game. We bet the mirror in game one. I think I like that. Um, and game one in this matchup, we bet him pretty handily, but game two, they uh, they chained together three Amirias, which is pretty hard to beat in most cases. Okay, so we got our glass casket as an insurance policy. That's not bad. So this can be Omen of the Sun. Which I mean, if they trade like the Omen, probably okay with it. We have Casket afterwards. What have you been running, James? For those in chat, uh, both James and John Ramos, both are other content creators. Uh, John plays more historic. James has been uh, running various adventure decks in Mythic. Two great guys to go check out as well. So this makes Extinction Event a little less useful. So I think what we do here... I think this is worth Skyclaving. I want to exile it, but I want to keep this Conqueror's Death for later. I, su I saw you play Winota, but I didn't see the list itself. I'll check it out after. I find Winota is just the deck that I never draw Winota. It works for so many people, but it's the card that just never comes together for me. Um, okay, so they're just value Yorianing here. This is something good to Conquer's Death after. These types of decks, like the Yorian piles are really my, like my play style. Like the opponent's deck is the deck I, I've enjoyed the most this season. Is it uh, Jeskai or just a straight red white? We can get back our visionary. Okay, so they play out the doom and the omen. Naya. So I think here, just get rid of this. They get their token. They get it. A blocker for the turn. Ooh, this is interesting. So I can do this, but I think getting rid of this. I should have been more mindful. I forgot this would give him a 4 4. And then this gives me something free to sack next turn. And their doom's also going to be a lot more taxed. 
So whatever they play this turn is going to cost two more. Playing kind of slow. Still have a lot of time on clock, but... Breeslicious, thanks for the follow. Appreciate the support. Um, here we probably get rid of Doom, right? Probably get rid of Doom. be Omen of the Sun. I want to keep it up because they've shown a lot of targeted removal outside of Exile, so it's my only food token right now, so at least it lets me um, protect it. I'm not going to play this out yet until they warrant us to. It'll also let me, if they play Miria's Call, be able to fight one of them. Uh, they showed Blood Chief's Thirst in the first game. I think now we do it. Symbiosis is also nice. Yes, please. Yes, please. Yeah, it, like, it's not as impactful because, um, especially game one, they usually only play two Blood Chiefs Thirst main, and then they'll play, like, Doom as kind of their catch all. And uh, this, especially with Doom, like, Wicked Wolf's indestructibility doesn't really play that well. Sick. Got him! 127. Uh, just give me one sec. I just want to call my dog up. She doesn't know where I am. Abby. I'm upstairs. Yeah, it's... It's definitely interesting. Sorry again, I'm just doing a quick reset between games because the client's been really sporadic for me today. Uh, they need to be more proactive or just have like the exile. Like in the Doom list I was playing, I have six sweepers just to catch up. Three exile, three just normal shatters. Let's run one more with this one. 126, see if we can get another win, push us into the top 100. And then we'll do a quick coffee break and then come back and jam another deck. This deck's felt powerful. Lots of ways, surprisingly, in a green-white deck to draw cards. Like we are kind of outpacing an Esper deck in card draw. Maldini Barezi. They got the Italian sleeves on. They got the Italian sleeves on. I was half joking about that. Okay. 
don't like necessarily shocking against the girl deck. So this could be mono green food. It can be gruel. It's probably gruel if they have the fabled passage. Uh, do we go down? Yeah, I think we just do that. Our hand's not that great right now. I'm going to use this for Love Struck Beast. Don't like drawing. This hopefully draws us into like a basic. Could have also done Trail there while oh, they're on Golgari Adventures. Okay, so I'm not as worried for my life total. If we are looking at like Gruel, then they can have a lot of incidental damage. So I th think we just do this. Play that out. Say go. This will let me, if I want, Yorian next turn. But I might just set up a trail. One, two, three, four, five, six. Not quite. Want to hit a land here? That's fine. Yeah, we could have Yorianed. My thought here is if I set up this food turn. Then next turn, I can blink the food token as well. Also, if I could get Kogula going first and then Yorian, then I just keep fighting their big stuff. Here, I'm probably gonna block with the goose and then draw a card. Yeah, not getting it off. If we would have got it off, then we would, they wouldn't have been able to henge. That's going to help with the grind. Draw a card here. Yes, please. That'll be a good follow-up play. It's not trying lions is really hurt. I think we do this still. Because this lets me attack and blow up their henge next turn. You, any of these incidentally humans? Okay. They use Rider for the turn. So they have a land. Okay, Kazandu. If I draw a land, I can make a food. Or 
perfect. So I can play out trail, go full combat. So you want to go full control when doing this, so that way you can put the trigger on the stack. Fortunately, I don't get the draws here, get off. but I take them off the creature. I have another Wicked Wolf as well. So I just do this. I'm going to Yorian next turn. Yikes, 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 yikes. Yeah, that turn we didn't draw the land is going to come by, back to bite us. That Greric was also really nice for them. So I do this. I fight the edge wall. And then I make a food. And then sack the food. Draw a card. This is going to be hard to get through, just with the tokens. We need Conker's death first to get rid of Garrick. Two conquers death. We need to do this. It's not great. They get to attack in here for four damage. Twenty-five. Just take the block here. Jeez. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. So we're short. So if I make a food, so I can tap these two, make a food. Play out Yorian. Do this, go full control. So let's fight scavenging ooze. I probably shouldn't have fought scavenging ooze. Should have fought just something smaller. Because it taps it. Ah, learning this deck. There's a lot of lines to this deck. Glass Casket's a good start here. Gain us some life, give us some blockers. They're also just like, everything they do draws them like 12 cards. 
yeah, rarely mythic. If you just do dot deck, it'll pull it up. This is Andre Starsky's list. He went 9-0 from um, the CFB Pro Tournament. We're 2-0 with it right now, up to 127 on the mythic ladder. we just do this Garrett can just down tick and kill my Yorian here or just make more this one's gonna be a tough one to come back from Kind of surprised I didn't do that pre-combat. Um, don't think we can really win, but we will try. They can Garrick minus. I have these two omens, but I don't think I can block enough. have to eat some food here. I can't block all this, can I? Okay, I'm just gonna concede here. They basically have it and I'm behind on time. Um, so Shatter seems good here, another Conquer's Death, Vivian's, the Oozes aren't that relevant here, Omens could come out, Charming Prince is fine, these Florhedrons don't really need... Minus... Actually, these can be relevant, but I guess we have Yorian. Trim just a Yorian. Kogala's good. On the play, I probably still want all that. Glass Casket also seems good. I think we maybe get rid of Charming Prince. Is Kogla really going to do much here? I think we cut it on the play. Like, it could fight the Lovestruck Beasts, but other than that, they have a lot of ground blockers. I think I cut one Yorian. The only upside is Yorian can go to the skies, but I feel like they'll have a lot of removal post board. Elder Wand, thanks for the follow. Appreciate the support. What is with us just like not drawing lands that don't hurt us in our opener? So this will probably be Charming Prince set up a scry looking for lands. Perfect. Don't have to damage ourselves there. Hmm. 
Ooh, I like both of those. Play this tapped, play Trail of Crumbs. If they play um, Edgewall, that Foulmire Knight. Yep, they always have those two together. So I think then what we do is I think we take them off the card advantage here. Let's see if we can offer the trade. Because that way next turn I can Wicked Wolf something if they have it. The alternative was I gave him a turn by having Edge Wall out. They probably take Wolf here, but Henge is more of a long game play. Conquer's Death is another. They take the trail. It's very interesting. Um, do we run this out naked? I mean, like, we don't have anything going on. Doesn't feel great. Kind of wish I got the trail in. If they kill this, it's just a target. Okay, so they rankle. Discard sack. Which player discards? So I'm probably getting rid of the Henge here. Conquer's Death plays better with Wrinkle. Okay, it's better than nothing. This lets me block and it gives me some protection for the Wicked Wolf. Whose is annoying? Shit. So they can decide to sack the ooze here. Really wanted to land that turn. Because now they discard this from our hand. We are one off. If we had the land, this this turn plays out so much different. Yeah, we lost this one. Logan West, thanks for the follow. We, uh... How's it going today? Here now they force us to discard here. They might draw. I guess shatter the skies and out. Okay, that's a start. Certainly a start. That can. Get us back a Wicked Wolf to fight this. I can gain three life next turn. Shatter the sky off the top would be great. Shatter. How about a land? Eight, nine, ten. Yeah, I'm dead. Uh, 